Okay, this is a quick revision video on the epigenetics lecture. So, just as a reminder to what's going on, if you look down the length of a chromosome, we've got uh, bits of chromatin that are euchromatin, which tend to be the regions where you've got expressed genes, and then you've got heterochromatin, which tends to be silenced chromatin, and then telomeres at the end, where very few genes, well, there are no genes there, uh, just protective bits of DNA to protect the end of the chromosomes. So the euchromatin is where you've got your gene dense regions and then with the relaxed parts of euchromatin allow gene expression. And what we're going to study is how the chromatin gets into a relaxed configuration. So here's just a reminder of um, what a gene is like. Uh, and on the whole scale of things on the previous slide we've got a chromosome here that which could be anything from 300 million bases across in length, sorry. Whereas if we look at the individual gene level, we could be looking at something 50,000 bases in length or maybe a few million bases, base pairs in length. And the key thing about all genes is that they have a promoter region, uh, a 5 prime untranslated region, then you've got your exons, introns, uh, and then a 3 prime untranslated region. And built into all of this are regions which allow this bit of chromatin to be expressed or not expressed and that's where your transcription factor binding sites come in in the five prime region here so just as a reminder you, your exons are what are spliced out from your pre mrna to produce your full mrna and that's your coding sequence which is going to go on to produce your amino acid uh, produce your protein so all of this gene expression is sort of regulated in a very complex way so if you imagine that this is your start of transcription, so this is where your 5 prime untranslated region is going to be and then your exon is going to be down here. You've got your promoter region with RNA polymerase bound up within all of these uh, transcription factors. You've got tartar box binding protein. So the whole range of things that affect whether RNA polymerase is able to start going in this direction. And some of these sites are thousands of base pairs away from the transcription start site. Uh, and these are basically all transcription regulator or transcription factor binding sites. Now these are really important because sometimes just a C change to a G can completely disrupt this transcription factor binding site. And this is where the first form of epigenetics comes in, which is DNA methylation. So you can have a C linked to a well, what we call a CPG island, where you've got C followed by G. And if that C is methylated, then in general, this transcription factor won't bind and that will silence gene expression. So a simple C methylated 10,000 bases away from the transcription start site could prevent this from binding and therefore prevent the whole complex from forming and prevent gene expression. Okay, this slide just shows that uh, DNA uh, is methylated by adding on a methyl group to cytosine that you can see there. So the enzyme is DNA methyltransferase and all it does is it tags on the methyl group to the uh, cytosine base. Now one thing that's weird about CPG islands, CPG islands are basically a, a C, then you've got your phosphodiester bond and then you've got a G. And C followed by G is actually not rare but underrepresented in the genome. Um, I could go into the reasons why but it'll take a bit of time. Uh, all you need, really need to know is that in the promoter regions of genes you tend to have got a high density of CGCGs whereas in non-promoter DNA they're actually underrepresented. Not rare but just underrepresented. And if we look at the CG dinucleotides in an actively expressed gene you see all of these here where you've got C's uh, noted. Those are all unmethylated CPG islands. So that's for an actively expressed gene, and then CPG islands later on might be methylated. Uh, don't worry too much about that. In a silent gene, uh, we've got methylation of all of these CPG islands, and that will cause transcriptional inactivation. So the general rule is when we're talking about DNA methylation, um, we silence genes by methylating the cytosines. These uh, CPG islands 
are methylated and that methylation pattern is inherited at cell division. So if we look here we've got a CPG island, you see it goes CPG on this strand and CPG on this strand as well. Uh, so both strands are methylated. When that is replicated, you see this top template strand has now got an unmethylated CPG island. Uh, DNA methyl transferase will recognize this and then tag on a methylation at the opposing, at the C, which is opposing that G. So this is why it's important that these are CG dinucleotides is because it reads CG on the top strand and then CG on the bottom strand. And that, it means that if you've got a methyl group there, you can put a methyl group there and maintain the pattern of methylation. So it's heritable upon cell division. And the same things happen at the bottom strand here. Although it's heritable in cell division, it's also reversible because these methylations can be removed and they can be added as the cell gets told to do something else. This just shows how methylations get messed up in disease situations. So here we've got some piece of tissue that's been stained for DNA methyl transferase and this is normal colon, this is um, colon which is growing aberrantly and this is colon cancer. And what we can see is the cells are overexpressing DNA methyl transferase. That overexpression of DNA methyl transferase is resulting in CPG islands becoming methylated, and then that is allowing the tumour to silence genes that are a liability for that tumour. So these are genes like tumour suppressor genes. The tumours cannot grow while these tumour suppressor genes are expressed. These are normal regulated genes genes that maybe regulate the cell cycle or regulate cell death. The tumours cannot grow happily whilst these genes are expressed. So what they do is they overexpress DNA methyl transferase, um, methylate the CPG islands in the promoter region of these genes, and then silence them. So this particular gene, RASF1A, which you don't really need to know about, is silenced in tumours, but is expressed in normal tissues. This slide just shows that um, DNA methylation occurs um, soon after fertilization. So you can see that the DNA that comes from the sperm is rapidly uh, demethylated, actively demethylated, whereas uh, DNA that comes from the egg is what we call passive demethylation, which basically means is as the cell divides, the methylation pattern is not um, maintained. Uh, so after the first cell division, methylation goes down to 50% of available sites and then 25 and then 12%. But it goes down to not quite 0% because some methylations are kept um, in place. And at the end of the lecture you'll see there's some slides on imprinting where those methylations are not uh, modified at all. So after widespread demethylation at the 8 cell stage, we then start to tag on methylations in a targeted way, so specific regions of the genome are then methylated to be silenced. Uh, other areas of the genome are, uh, gene expression is allowed. So this is um, a cell lineage dependent uh, effect. Some, some genes are switched on, some genes are switched off, and DNA methylation is one of those mechanisms to allow that to occur. So DNA methylation is the first epigenetic epigenetic mechanism. The second major one is histone modifications. Um, and to, when we're talking about histones, we're talking about modifications of the proteins that DNA is wrapped around. So if we look at a chromosome like this, we've got chromatin. And chromatin is always, always shown as these sort of long chains, but in reality it's DNA wrapped around an octama of proteins. So there's various histone proteins and then another almost sealing histone H1 um, histone protein. So the DNA itself is wrapped around these balls of histone proteins and it's modifications to these histone proteins that decide whether the um, chromatin is active and allowed to be transcribed or silent. And what we'll do is look at the enzymes that put little tags on here to allow this chromatin to be condensed or not. Now when 
DNA is wrapped tightly around histones, it means that transcription factors can't get in and bind to the transcription factor binding site. So this is why compact chromatin is silent and looser chromatin is potentially transcribable. It's because the transcription factors can get in and bind to the uh, DNA where the transcription factor binding sites are. So this is what DNA looks like when it's wrapped around the histone. So we've got sort of one three quarter loops of DNA wrapped around. And if we want DNA to be actively transcribable, we generally have an acetyl group, so that's a CH2CH3, tagged onto the histone N terminal tails. So if you remember, proteins have got an N terminus and a C terminus. The N terminus tends to stick out past the DNA. And if that's acetylated, then that means that the whole chromatin becomes loose. Whereas mostly when it's methylated, that causes the chromatin to become silent. So we have a complex of enzymes that regulate all of this. As we can see up here, we've got acetylated chromatin, and that's allowing transcription to start. So gene expression is on. And histone acetyl transferases add these acetyl groups on. If this process is going to be reversed, we have histone deacetylases, which take off the acetyl groups. So this puts the chromatin into a less transcribable format. And then if we want the chromatin to be silent, histone methyl transferases put on a methyl group, and those methyl, uh, well, methylated histones tend to um, associate with heterochromatin proteins, which cause the chromatin to become condensed and gene expression is switched off. These methyls can be removed to put them into this sort of semi-on-off configuration um, and that would be histone demethylating enzymes which are not shown. This slide shows the, the key histone modifications that we're interested in um, and most of these are on histone H3 and we have a little coding system of describing what these are. So H3 means histone H3. Then K27 means lysine 27 because K is the amino acid symbol for uh, a letter for lysine. So this little diagram here shows histone H3 and all the potential sites there where histone H3 can be modified. And the key ones that you need to know about is that histone lysine 9, so K9, is gene silencing. We've got um, an acetyl group at K9 means gene expression, but counterintuitively, counterintuitively a methyl at K4 does switch on gene expression. So this is the only one that you need to know about where a methyl actually switches on gene expression. Then we've got uh, an acetyl group at uh, K14 and this phosphate, you probably don't really need to know about that one. The other major one that you do need to know about is H3K27 methylation particularly trimethylation and this is where we get silencing of Hox genes which we'll come on to and silencing of the X chromosome. So this is a major gene silencing mechanism um, whereas K9 acetylation is the major gene uh, expression modification. So this slide just shows uh, X inactivation that occurs in females so where you've got a cell with two separate X chromosomes in any one cell, one of them is always silenced. And that is done randomly early in embryogenesis. And this uh, means that only one X chromosome is expressed in females. And this silencing occurs via that histone H3 lysine 27 trimethylation. And that's what silences that uh, X chromosome. Um, so this is some of everything that we've covered. Uh, we've got two major forms of epigenetic regulation. The first one is methylation. So here's a summary of everything we've covered. Uh, epigenetics is uh, there's basically two different forms of epigenetics. DNA methylation, so methylation of CPG islands. If the DNA in a promoter region is methylated at a CPG island, that generally silences gene expression or we've got methylation and acetylation of chromatin. These are the histone H3 N-terminal tails. And if they're acetylated, that means gene expression potentially is on. Whereas if they're methylated, generally it means gene expression is switched off. 
And then for those who are interested, there's a few extra slides on how this can affect a disease situation um, called imprinting. Um, but that's if you're interested.